Millennials seek authentic community and intentional relationships and not just online. However, it's not a surprise to anyone that millennials aren't finding this in churches. Millennials go to church less, pray less, and find religion as less significant part of their lives than other generations. Sociologist Michael Hout from NYU attributes part of this decrease in religious commitment to being raised to be independent thinkers. Millennials value figuring out what they believe, why they believe it, and what they'll do about it. Despite this downward trend, we have a group of millennials here at Ascension who value their faith and have been able to find authentic relationships and community. We millennials are grateful to be a part of and add our voice and experiences to the faith community here at Ascension. When I was 12, um, my grandma, my dad's mom, passed away suddenly. Um, we weren't expecting it at all. And I remember just having so many questions. For me, when it really started to click and it started to really become a part of my life, um, was through my pregnancy with my daughter. Um, it was a very, very challenging time for me. I was in a very dark place. So watching how how I thought brave my dad was, but when he explained it to me was that he ex was telling me that it was his faith in God that was helping him through it. In the very early stages of my pregnancy, I was really, really uncertain whether I was gonna be able to do it or not. Like, we were trying to decide if we were gonna go adoption or what, what we were gonna do. I was really, really scared. It helped him, you know, answer his questions. And so that was kind of a big moment for me when I started to realize what faith was and how to rely on God. Kind of felt really alone, and but it was my family and church that, that got me through. I started coming back to church and it was nothing but support. Growing up, church was, it was a very regular structured part of it. It was a given. We were going to go to church. We were going to be involved in programs there at the church. And, you know, I, I don't want to say we didn't have a choice, but we didn't have a choice. Yeah. You know? I was like, I want to say like 20-ish. That was the only time in my life that I wasn't at church every single Sunday and Wednesday. Like, and it was, I didn't like it. Like you were kind of saying, definitely it was an expectation. It was part about being a Saunders as you go to church on Sunday and, uh, you know, everything, everything that my parents do and how they teach and how they parent is at least a very strong attempt to be a reflection, a reflection of, of Christ. Um, that is how they dictate every single decision they make and that's what they want for us as well. I don't know, growing up I felt like there's a lot of pressure always to like make sure you picked the right college to go to and the right career and like if you didn't pick it right everything was gonna like be awful and you screwed up. <laughs> It, it really wasn't until maybe college, when I was out on my own, that I feel like I really developed my own mm -hmm. personal faith and, and, and connection with Christ. Going through that time in my life where I wasn't going to church and then coming back to it really did prove to me like how much I missed it. You know, because in the moment you're like, okay, yeah, I can live without that. But when you get back into it and you see how good it is and how good it makes you feel, then you're like, oh yeah, I really miss this. I want to make it a permanent thing again. Yep. because. It's hard to go back and forth because you really kind of have to make up your mind like what you're going to do. And so to have like, I don't know where I got it, but through church and through talking with, with others in church and, and people I knew, get that, getting that sense that, that God was going to be with you no matter what choice you made and that there wasn't like one right thing you had to do and otherwise the whole world was going to be wrong, that God was going to help work with you throughout or throughout no matter what happened. It's very distinct, but I remember I was saying something to my mom about it. I don't remember how old I was, but I was like, I'm like, I don't feel like I have a relationship with God, mom. Like, I was like, I feel, I don't know. I feel like I don't really know who he is. And I feel like that it were just, it's just kind of happening to me, not like with me, I guess. As little as I can remember, you know, my parents coming and sitting by my bedside and saying prayers with us every night. And that was really important. I said something about like, I compared myself to either my sister, who is nine or 12 years older than I am, so obviously she had a very different faith journey at that point than I did, and even my mom, and I remember she said to me, she's like, well, Annie, you know, your relationship with God is yours. It's very, it's unique, it is different. And she's like, you know, you need, obviously you need to put, you know, the effort into developing that too, but she's like, you know, you don't need to compare yourself to other people. 
that I remember about that was just um, almost kind of a cloud of witnesses sense because um, we'd also we'd pray for my older brother who died and you know that he'd be watching down looking down on us. What she encouraged me to do was just pray outwardly and just kind of start from there and go on, go on that way. And she's like, I think that as you get older, it'll probably get easier. And she's like, you're still really, you're a kid still. So <laughs> it's okay that you don't have it figured out. She's like, most adults don't. So <laughs> you don't need That's to worry true. about it. I think when we pray for God to help, sometimes we're expecting this like lightning bolt. Um, my mom really did teach us to rely a lot on prayer and um, you know, if you're afraid, if you're worried or you're stressed and um, so I think that that, we, that really influenced the way that I view things now. Really like, oh, these five people that, that came and helped, mm -hmm. like that is how God answers prayer and I think seeing those times and reflecting on, looking back at some of those circumstances and being able to say, you know, this was a really challenging circumstance. This was, a, you know, a devastating moment or season of my life. How have, how did God work in that? And it's like, oh, he brought these people in. Mm -hmm. He opened these doors. He closed these doors. That's, and that's interesting because, I mean, me, you know, growing up in the church and having that um, routine week after week to actually go to church, um, I feel like we didn't really pray as much as maybe it sounds like you guys did. Um, and actually what's interesting to me or what was great for me is, you know, when we found one another, we really did start to pray more for one another. We really started to rely on God much more. I think I'm at a spot where I really like the idea of, okay, I go to church on Sunday, I take this minute to reflect, and then I go out into my community and I'm like, okay, what would the church do? Not necessarily what would like the Lutheran church do, but like, how would God, what is God would, really what do you want? want? Yeah. In my, mm -hmm. in my space. Just being able to show my faith through the love that I share with other people, mm -hmm. because of course I'm a Lutheran, so that evangelism thing I'm not very good at, <laughs> but <laughs> um, showing my love and showing Christ's love through my actions, I think is the way that I try and yeah. present myself. And like, that's where we, that's where we differ. Like our religious backgrounds, like you're Lutheran, you have yes. been your whole life, right? Yeah. <laughs> I was raised, I, when I first was born, I was born into a Nazarene church, and well, I went there yeah. until I was uh, 10. I, mean, I went there until I was 8, and then we moved to California, and I went there from 10 to 11, and then we quit, and my grandparents moved to a Baptist church. I've gone through different seasons of, sometimes it's, you know, being really passionate about studying an, an idea or a section in the Bible, sometimes it's being really involved with things happening, like mm -hmm. with a church. But I think it comes back to, so what do I do with that? Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes that that looks different than maybe it has historically to be involved mm -hmm. with a church, but to to take my faith and try, you know, as best as I can to put that into action. Mm -hmm. We millennials are grateful to be a part of and add our voice and experiences to the faith community here at Ascension.